Hi, I'm Jake Monroe. I'm a cell management specialist with Omafra, and we're here just on the edge of Grimsby in the Niagara area, and we're looking at a field that was planted green into a cover crop mixture in the middle of May. Uh, you can see behind me we've got uh, we've got a brown field of cover crop residue or uh, mulch on the surface, and we've got uh, the corn crop that's just starting to poke out. And so we're going to talk about what we've observed in this field, um, some some pointers to, to take note of when, when you're considering planting green and, uh, and also what's worked well with this grower who's, who's got a number of years of experience. Hi, my name is Larry Dick. I farm together with my son Ben. We farm, in the, our home base is in the big town of Camden and we farm under the name Camden Green. Our main rotation is a corn, soybeans, wheat rotation. Uh, we do some dry beans. I've got some places that don't want me growing soys and we've started to introduce buckwheat into the rotation. Again, there's lots of reasons there. Uh, so behind the wheat, we plant a mixed species cover crop. So we no-till that into the wheat stubble. And then our goal is to plant corn green into that. Uh, when the corn is at the four to six leaf stage, we're coming in and side dressing as well as interseeding, again, uh, a mixed species, a smaller mix. It's only a four or five way mix. Uh, into the corn crop and uh, and so then we'll plant soybeans green into that that's the goal it, it's all been a learning curve and we're continuing to adapt our, our first year we had lots of challenges in 2016 but I, I realized that we needed to look at our planter row unit as a multi-step process so where our planter is today is we have a set of rollers on the front to roll the cover crop down. The biggest reason for that is that enabled us to run our spray booms low in, a, in sensitive areas, which we farm around a lot of grapes and orchards and greenhouses. So we have rollers, uh, really sharp opener blades. We had to change the gauge wheels that we run on the planter we've been running. We had to change closing wheels, all of that. Um, but it, it was, it was a, a research process to get to where we are. So we're in this field that was planted green on May 15th. Today is May 27th, so we're, we're just almost at the two week mark. Um, we're, we've dug up uh, seed trenches in a number of different spots. And th this right here is fairly consistent with, with what we've seen uh, just about everywhere. There's, a, there's certainly some corn plants that are just poking out of the seed trench. Uh, generally speaking, the corn's not quite up yet, um, but we've, we've seen that uh, the grower in this field did seed the moisture uh, again he's experienced so he, he had he had the experience to know that he had to get that seed deep and into moisture uh, as the cover crop can can dry out that soil um, and he's he's done a nice job of getting that seed uh, germinated and uh, relatively evenly so we're going to check back on this field later in the season to do some stand counts and see how even that corn crop comes up um, but so far so good in terms of getting the seed down to moisture and getting uh, getting it germinated uh, evenly. Okay so this grower had a multi-species mix in the field and we had uh, crimson clover, cereal rye, vetch as well as turnips that overwintered and Austrian winter peas that given the snow cover and the milder winter also came through uh, the winter into spring. So in terms of a burn down uh, the grower applied uh, glyphosate, integrity and merge and did that in the afternoon uh, just just prior to planting and you can see here that the control generally in the background generally has been good the corn's just about popping up now and of course we want we don't want that corn plant to be seeing uh, much green at all and so generally it's it's nice and brown but we've got a couple of exceptions so uh, you can see here that the that the vetch that was in the mix uh, is still green it's it's kind of been burnt off on the top and that's fairly consistent with uh, with the walk that we've done across the field here, uh, but the lower leaves are still green. We've also got some Austrian winter pea that came through the winter, and similar observation. We still have, uh, you know, we've got kind of uh, burnt off leaves at the top, and still green material at the bottom. Turnip, on the other hand, has been has been controlled nicely and and is is uh, pretty much entirely brown and dead now. And same goes largely for. Uh, for the cereals in the field here too, as well as the crimson clover. So, uh, just shows the, some of the challenges of having a multiple species in a mix and, and controlling them all in one go.
Okay, so we're back here at this planted green field just outside of Grimsby. It's three weeks later and we're looking at uh, a pretty decent corn stand here. So we've just done some, some uh, plant stand counts and we're, we're at about the 27 or 28,000 uh, plants per acre uh, count and that, this was a field that was seeded at about 30 or 31,000. Um, so most of the plants have come, as we saw last time, those seeds were into moisture and they had started germinating. We're fortunate in this area to get some rains following as well for any, any seeds that were just a little, a little um, too shallow. Um, but we've got, like I mentioned, an even stand. And we're seeing here as well that as, as we're hitting that V3, V, V4 stage, we've got the nodal roots developing. And importantly, especially on these uh, heavier clay soils, we're seeing that there's no signs of, of sidewall compact, compaction or hatcheting of the root system. We've got these, these first sets of nodal roots uh, coming out and moving out in all directions, which is exactly what we want to see. So generally speaking, a uniform and healthy corn stand so far. My feeling is one of deep gratitude. Uh, we've had some fairly stellar failures. And so to see a nice corn crop like this behind me and around me, I, I'm just really grateful. In terms of planting, our soils came through the winter in really good shape. We weren't nearly as hard as we are many years, so the planter didn't work nearly as hard uh, to get the seed to depth, but it, it did plant well, and, and, uh, and the cover crop rolled. All of that worked really well. On our soils, when our soils are fit, we plant. That can often be not till mid-May. If, if someone is on a soil that's ready April 10, and you've got an aggressive cover crop growing, and you're not going to plant till May 5, then maybe you need to look at terminating because the cover crop can pull too much moisture. We know that. So that's something you'll have to learn. But even then, uh, in the corner, leave two acres and plant into it green. See what happens. If you lose two or four acres, it's not going to make you go broke and you never know what you're going to learn.